So, y'all ever take this shot? On camera? Salute. Let's do it. Sarah taking that bitch back. Yeah. Oh God. Just like that. Oof. And we on. That's how we start. That's how we start this new episode. Yeah, that got me going. All right. Okay. Everybody feeling all right? Yeah. We good man. We good. How you doing? I'm all right. You good? Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. <clears throat> how are you? I'm chilling, man. I'm just here. It's been a long day, but I'm still up. You know, just vibing and maintaining. You know what I'm saying? Everybody doing? I'm all right. How are you, Jamari? Okay, okay. We're all good. Just, just checking on that. Yeah, just, you know, mental health is a big thing today. Oh, God. So, that's I'm real. Make sure we're straight. We're recording. Yeah. Shout out to Jamar. Yeah, we've been recording. All right, cool. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Welcome to another episode, episode 38 to be exact, of the Payday Off podcast. Here we are. We got T, me, Roy, and one of our good friends, Sarah, with us today. Okay. Clap up for Sarah. The first <laughs> female guest and the also first reoccurring second guest. You know what I'm saying? Really? We, we, yeah, we never had anybody on. Two oh. times. Oh. So you're the first female also in the first reoccurring like again. First so. and only female, right? You haven't had another girl? No. No. We have, we have, we've had no other woman on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're going to get shout Mariah on her. Yeah, shout out to you though. We're going to get Mariah on her at some point though. Okay, I was going to. Okay, yeah, that'd we be got cool. some people we want to get on. I'd so, be fine. But we're here. Um, it's Sunday, so um, we are drinking, of course, because it is Sunday. Am I tripping by You got to drink on Sunday? Sunday fun day. Sunday fun day. Yeah, yeah. I associate, I, I personally always associate Sundays with, like, getting lit. As really? fucked up as that sounds, I'm just being real. Alcoholic guy. Uh, I'm not trying to be like that. I'm just being real. <laughs> For real. So when's the last Sunday where you just didn't drink? <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> that first initial reaction. <laughs> alcoholic, bro. I'm not, I'm just talking about that. Bro, uh, Nah. You know what? You're that probably is a good conversation to have. I feel like, especially because it was just football season. Yes. So yeah. I was. You, really, have a, you have a reason. The last yes. multiple Sundays. I was talking about sense. that with Rob today. Right. I was like, anytime I'm off, especially on a Sunday, then you're drinking. I'm drinking and doing something. Like, I'm, there's never a Sunday really where I'm literally just chilling at home. I, I can't. I can't tell you the last Sunday where I've just chilled at home on some like I'm not doing anything today type shit. That's nice. There's, I do that a lot. Yeah. Because I only get a couple of Sundays off each month. Do you feel like you're extroverted? Yeah, I'm definitely an extrovert. You oh, are, okay. yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. What do you yeah. think you are, introvert or extrovert? Introverted. Extrovert? I'm an introvert. Oh, you're an introvert. T is, sure. T is, I want to say T is like half and half. Yeah, because yeah. I have, I'll, yeah. I'll be out with everybody, but then I have like a threshold where I'm like, okay, I need to be by myself. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Like, I really love being alone. Oh, yeah. But also... Once I, once I start talking to people, I can kind of be like the life of the party, yeah. you know, but like it takes a lot to get me out of my shell to Correct. even want to do that. And then also my social battery drains very quickly. I, ca- I kind of compare it to when like you have a, like a kid, like say you like a three, four year old kid when they first come around, you know how they're kind of shy. Yeah. But then as they get to know you over like an hour or two, then they yeah. start to act kind of wild. That's literally yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. I know this. If you put me in a room Except where I'm just 30. like, don't know people like that, I feel people out first and I'm like, okay, am I going to be crazy? Am I going to like kind of like talk or am I going to be quiet? So it just depends on the people. There have been times where I'm quiet, yeah. times that I'm like going crazy. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, based off that, if I'm around a lot, just like after a while, I'm just like, okay, cool. And I need to just be by myself or like. Yeah, that I'm like the three year old that needs to go take a nap. Right, right. Like, I, I don't get on your nerves because like I'm leaving before. Yeah, exactly. Being I by yourself is underrated. Like, I love being by myself. But there's a there's a limit to that too, as as well as being like with a lot of people as well. But it depends on who you are as a person. I think you might be a little more extroverted than me? than me. Oh, okay. How's that? Just because like I could be alone for a very well, long I time. Well, I work from home, so I'd be there's be times where like I work from home and I'm just like I haven't seen a human in like four days. That feels weird, so, doesn't it? I don't know. What? That feels weird. It doesn't for me. Like I wouldn't even think twice about it. You're Especially de- because I have a dog though. Oh, yeah, that definitely makes a difference. T is definitely much more of an extrovert than you are. Yeah. Okay, so okay. That's that's, well, a, I don't know. that's a real yeah. thing. 
Okay. Because you actually just on step a scale, out. like you're still an introvert, but like on a scale of introvert. Yeah, I, just, I don't know you like that, so I yeah, probably are. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Sarah really just be chilling his head most all the time. I know you do. Yeah, you don't really be doing shit. And I I dread <laughs> going to my no. job at night. Like I I love the opportunity that I have with my job, but I hate. Like it's so loud and there's so many people and people are so annoying mm. and Does that give it's you just anxiety? a lot. Uh, no, going it's to my job funny. doesn't give me anxiety because I'm used to it, but um, other social events, the thought of it gives me anxiety or sometimes like hanging out with people. I saw this tweet once and it was like, you ever, uh, or someone ever texts you that they're pulling up to your house and you think to yourself like, oh my God, my life is about to change. <laughs> What? It's this feeling of like, oh my God, like my aloneness is over. Like I'm going to have to socialize. Oh yeah. I'm going to this place. I'm going to do this thing. Like that's crazy. (laughs) That's like the, oh shit, here we go again. Like about to walk into this shit. Like fuck. I'd rather just be by myself right now. I'm going to keep it above. I feel that. When I'm alone for an extended period of time. You don't like that. I do not like that. Yeah. I love that shit. I do not like that at all. Like when I get home. Let's say, for example, when I get home from work and I'm just chilling here, I don't. I never quite look forward to coming home, and I know that I'm just going to be alone. Wow, I really so intro- look extrovert. forward to that. And I, and and, and it's too. not. It is not to the point where I'm necessarily <laughs> saying like when I get home, like I, like when I'm done with work, I want to go out and party. Yeah. All I'm saying is, is that when I get home and I'm like, I'm sitting here, I'll value that time. But I can only do that for so. You get long. bored very quickly. I get very, I, I get very bored. So I'd be chill. I'll just be like, I'd be loving it. Let's say like, let's say I did have a Sunday <laughs> where I'm free and I didn't have any plans. I'm gonna find some plans to yeah. do because Damn. Is that bad? there's no way I can just sit here and just on some like, let me just watch TV today type shit. I can't I can do that. sit in dead silence for all day. Yeah. Like I have my on days, my phone. No. So as some as we relate on introvertness, do you have like? In, rea- in social, sh- like, reality, do you have, like, weird things you do when you're alone? Just, like, because, for example, I know I'll, like, play some music, then I'll be in the mirror just, like, pretend, pretend I'm in a music <laughs> video, like, will you do that? I'll be doing As a, that. Okay, okay. Then we all get a good thing. Like, I thought some introverted I'll shit. I'll do that shit off. before I get in, like, the shower. Yeah, yeah, Like, ass naked in the mirror. I talk to myself a lot. TMI. I mean, that ass. Talk to yourself. That's another one. Like I talk to myself yeah. a lot. It's not weird, but I feel like. This thing that, in the grocery store, like there's definitely been times yeah. where people will look at me thinking I'm talking to them. I think and everybody I'm like, talks to themselves. It's something that people will like, like out surface loud. level be weird, but it's not yeah. that people do that. Like talking it's to themselves. It's one of those yeah. things where when you see somebody doing it, you're like, what the fuck they're doing? But the reality is you do that too. Yeah. Like I'll be in the grocery store that. talking yeah. about like this onion is whack. Why yeah. would anybody buy that onion? And I'd be having <laughs> conversations with myself and shit. Like, I can't hey, like, quite oh. say I'd be having a whole ass conversation. You might be schizophrenic. But um, <laughs> let me elaborate on that. Just... I don't know example, but I just be like, just talking to myself like about like oh how my day went like oh yeah like that's crazy like I gotta I gotta tighten up on that type shit like not like hey Terrence hey Terrence number two like how you doing like <laughs> not like that just on some like I'll stop talking <laughs> <laughs> nigga a whole I mean, ass mur- a whole fuck ass you murderer what do you say that's what I'm saying like yeah, damn work was crazy is, last shit fucking like, you niggas a like, serial killer the fuck up nigga, what. Yeah, you a sociopath, bitch. No, I definitely, I'll talk to <laughs> my, I probably have conversations where I like full on talk to myself, like just the other day. Yeah, it's not that way. I don't want to get into it, but like something happened at work and I was like having this conversation to myself almost as if like I was telling somebody what had happened, but yeah. I was just mm. talking out loud to myself, like talking myself through it. Basically, I think because I like to always have like, I like to have good points. I like to have witty things to say and I like to get my point across clearly mm. so like when i do go tell somebody this story like i'm gonna have my shit lined up yeah so i talk to myself like that like i i get it straight with myself before i go on and tell somebody so you pretty much have a conversation bef- with yourself before you go present it to somebody else yeah that reminds me of like when you get into like an argument with somebody and then like hours later you think about yeah, what yeah, you yeah. could have said exactly that's, exactly that's like that. the vibe you, you ever have that mm-hmm. exactly that that's the vibes of what i got from the yeah. Yeah. that's pretty much any argument i do I that all the time Anytime I ever have an argument, I always, <laughs> always you go back and you're like, and go, you know what? Yes, like, God, I'm like, damn, I should have said that. Shit. I definitely should have said. Like that was a that. solid point right there. Yes, and because you really present to yourself, if I would have used this bullet point, this bullet point, and that bullet point, I really would have got my I point across. I would have got my point across, and I would have won the argument. Would have yeah. showed that motherfucker. Yeah. But we just care about winning. So yeah. that's just people. But as far as talking to myself, I don't know. That's serial killer energy. What? That was not. You, you'd be surprised no. how many people do that. I think everyone. I'm just talks saying, on some like full serial ass killer energy. I'm just playing, but. <laughs> okay. Speak. Hold on. Speaking of. Uh, Speaking of serial killers. Did y'all see that documentary on Netflix? Which one? That Which Murdoch one? documentary. 
I watched it and it was and it ended up being background noise because TikTok is so much more entertaining than like almost anything. So it was ended up I was like I'm gonna watch this and then I ended up just scrolling on TikTok. It was really bad, but I've seen a lot of TikToks on it. <laughs> and did you watch well, maybe, it? Maybe what you, you should say? mind your business. No. Do you, you know? Do you know? Do you know what I'm talking about? He said about that just pissed him off. Oh. The fact that I, the fact that I scrolled on TikTok. Dude, I be doing that. Like it's kind of addicting. Yeah. T, you did, have bad. you heard about the Murdoch documentary? No. You don't. But know about my that? the premise, if I'm not mistaken, the premise is that like a a dad, basically or supposedly, uh, killed his son because his son had done something. Murdoch. Yeah. That's there we go. <laughs> That's what it's about. I guess that's the good. Just like your regular like serial killer. I can't sit here. No, he's not. Here. I he can't killed s- his own son. Okay. What? I'm gonna explain Supposedly. to you. Supposedly. I'm gonna explain yeah, to you within 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. A family in South Carolina over a, about a six to seven year period was involved in all these different murders, not murders but deaths and a, and a murder as well, um, on different occasions. Anyways. Some with their sons they had, and one was like the mom potentially murdered the housekeeper type thing. And then on top of that, after everything was said and done, uh, the dad just got convicted on Friday of oh. murdering the mom and the son. Oh, like the mom and the son. This 100% happened in a rural ass yes. hat. This, yes, rural based on what area, you said. But they were like a, they, but they were like a, a rich fuck? lawyer rich family. Rich as fuck. Yeah, a rich lawyer family in South Carolina. Like, okay. They like ran, pretty much like ran the town like, and nobody really fucked with them in the town. And this, this sounds was, interesting. Yeah, and this is not like an old story. This was like this whole, Recent. like all these like deaths happened over like the, the last like seven, eight years type shit. So that is what makes it crazy. Anyways, long story that short, sounds there's a documentary on it. Netflix? I thought y'all might have watched it. I, I'll watch it. I want to watch I it do, now. I really like documentaries and I really yeah. like reality TV. Yeah. That's my favorite thing to watch. Documentaries. Documentaries is my favorite thing to watch. Yeah, I and, love documentaries. And then I like thrillers if I'm going to watch a movie, so, like psychological thrillers. Yes. Um, and then like reality TV, some reality TV. Like, I, like. Yes. Whoa. Oh, we got Coda in here. Oh. Cody, you good, bro? What happened? He's hearing something outside. Oh. You got bro. <laughs> Hearing voices. Go to relax, bro. It's okay. Oh, here's a guy outside grabbing the trash. Grabbing the trash, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Makes sense. Brief intermission. He gets super protective when there's other people around. Like he gets even louder and like yeah growls even more because he feels like he's protecting everybody in here like that's his job I fuck that's, that's a good guard dog damn well somebody she like, he, he, he was on yeah. go he was if like somebody oh. walks in the crib <laughs> he was like yeah. he saw when, you saw when he walked in he growled at him yeah yeah it's a good if somebody guard walks dog. in the crib on some aggressive <laughs> shit <laughs> you really don't it's like you don't need a gun you need a fucking dog that's a fact yeah. but did you know that dogs um there it's been proven so many times they've done the guy who comes in with the big suit you know what I'm talking about? That like oh, that little dog the biting. They bite him? Yeah, yeah, the dog yeah, biting yeah, one. Yeah. They have, they'll have that guy come into someone random's house. You know who who obviously is expecting them, but while that person isn't home, so just to see what their dogs would do if an intruder entered. Hmm. And like nine times out of ten, the answer is fucking nothing. Yeah, dogs have to be like people think that it's a dog's natural instinct to like attack t- a, a tr- an intruder. Yeah, and it's. It's fucking not at all. But they freeze up when it actually comes. Like they, they'll think that it's like a friend, you know. Like hey. they want to go up to them, kiss them, like see what's up with them. Like I can if, promise you right yeah. now, because how do they know the difference is? Let's say between your dog, my friend and a. a yes. Yeah, like I've had my maintenance guy come in with pest control while I'm there because you know he, he can't correct. be alone with if them. You, if you truly, you don't attack if you them. Truly thought your dog was going to do something like that, then you would know. It would be to the point where like yeah. you would never hire a dog sitter. Yeah. If because. It would ne- like imagine like say you went out of town and I, you like hey, said hey Leroy let me can you c- go take code out yeah for me while I'm gone right I would and never worry that because he's gonna attack you yes it's like I'm gonna pull up I'm gonna open the door he's gonna be like I and mean, he's gonna be like, oh it's you yeah okay or even if I was a complete stranger he's when I walk when I get in I put the leash on him he's gonna walk and just go yeah, yeah. so it, I feel like you have to train your dog to be like that if you if they're you either an yeah. aggressive dog like by nature you know like your dog Correct. specifically is aggressive not their breed or anything or you've trained them 
mm-hmm. to be aggressive towards intruders. Like, and yes. that's the only way that it's going to happen. But most of the time, if your dog is any bit of friendly, they're not just going to attack somebody walking through the door. Yeah. They but just it's, have to know. But it's still a good deterrent to have a dog growling at the door. Because most people, one, don't know that. And two, um, even if they did know that, like, are you really going to take the risk that this dog is either aggressive or yep. mm. trained, you know? Yeah. Because if I could promise you, yeah. if I was, a, if I was a, an intruder, I would not want to... Why would you wa- why would you want to take the risk? Why wouldn't you just go somewhere with it's, no dog? Yeah. Especially you- not hearing his especially hearing his loud ass. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a good point. Yeah. And in an apartment good. complex. Like when you could literally go to the person right, right next to you who doesn't have a dog yep. for certain. Yep. That's the real deal. Um what were we talking about before? Uh, Quarter started barking? Uh, I was like, <laughs> I lost my The Murdoch. The Murdoch. Oh yeah, the Murdoch shit. Yeah. Anyways, some southern shit. Um, that no, was, that actually seemed pretty int- I kind of want to watch it now. Definitely watch oh, it. Oh, we were talking about documentaries. We really like documentaries. You were getting into thrill. I said thrillers. psychological thrillers I love for movies. And What's your top three thrillers, if you can think of it right now? I literally have a list in my phone of ones that I would recommend to people to watch, but like a, a top three. That's hard. Because I have to say, a lot of them get like slightly repetitive. Oh, I have probably one good one that I would re- would recommend to people, and it's called "I See You." I think it's on Prime. And What's if it you, about? it's you. If you've watched a lot of thrillers, you kind of start to get an idea of like the who the who done it type of thing. You know, like you can kind of guess what's gonna happen at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're like super into psychological thrillers, but this one, like you'll think that you know and then you don't know and then you, and then you might think that you know again but like you don't fucking know like you you have no clue at the end mm. um so what's that, that one called I, it's called i see you oh i see you. okay okay gotcha you like the mind games yeah like the i i just like movies where like i don't know and i think that's why i like reality tv too is like i just don't know i i'm not able to predict what's gonna happen at the end do you like reading books <laughs> I don't. At, no, I do. I, I should probably read books, but I don't read books. Remember the shit we said? What? I, I get so sick of motherfuckers being like, the movie is so good. But you have to read the damn book. You have to. It's <laughs> so much different. Bro, the book. The fucking book. I think it's, I think it's the anticipation. <laughs> The I think what? the anticipation builds up in a book because, like, it takes longer. You know, like, a movie takes you, whatever, two hours to watch, and a book takes you multiple days multiple days to read, a week to read, or whatever. So the anticipation is, like, so much higher. That's a good point if, so like mind is, if your mind works like that, yeah. That you have to put the book down and no, go hey. to sleep and wonder what happens for, you know, 12 hours or whatever until so you pick your book up again. And I'm not hating on anybody yeah. who likes to read because if you like to read people and you're intellectual, different. people are different. All I'm saying is when people say shit like that, like, you have to read the book. I'm like, bro, I'm not reading the book. I saw I know, the movie. I'm not, I'm not reading the fucking book. The book is so much better. If the movie sucks, I'm just not going to watch it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to read the book. Yeah. Period. <laughs> but, like, if the movie sucks, the storyline's dead because yeah. I'm not reading the book. Everyone's different. So, I, I, I just don't care enough. So, books are more stimulating. Yeah. I guess so, but I can't really quite and say off of that. But. True. That's true. And yeah. but bu- like I want to like be in the books. I wish I was. Right, There's books only... keep you sharp for yeah. sure. So like I'm not mad at anyone who right. reads books and who are super into books. Like I'm jealous. I wish that I could like yeah. get into reading books. I think when I was young, like really young, like elementary school, I liked. <laughs> I remember like back in those days, I was into those. Uh, remember those Lemony Snicket books? Yeah. Yes. yeah. I read like yes. like the first five series. I was like really into it. And I shit. liked the um. And I saw the movies, and like it, it low key was different. Yeah. I'll say that. My bad. Were you gonna say that? The R. L. Stein. Oh, the Goosebumps, Goosebumps too. I was Goosebumps. in that. Yeah, I was in that I show loved too. Goosebumps. I thought with the Goosebumps sh- uh, shows. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, those yeah. were good too. Did you ever read the Goosebumps book that like That's you could first. pick your ending? Oh, I don't remember that. You don't remember those? You could. It would be like if you want to um, befriend this person at camp. Let's just say for whatever book, flip to page sixty one, and if you want to befriend this person at camp flip to page 78 and you would get a oh, different you choose your... yeah you would get a different story that's d- okay it that's was dope yeah it was super yeah. dope i loved I those books if my bad were... i've been looking at code has been licking his booty for like the last <laughs> three minutes <laughs> i was like trying to, i was like what the f-? now he's like going to the style i was about to say <laughs> sorry anyway go ahead, if go ahead. you were ever one of those if you were <laughs> my bad 
Because <laughs> I know hey. I was looking at it. Too. <laughs> he was going. He was. <laughs> if you were. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. If you were. Uh, if you were ever one of those kids who never had money for the Scholastic Book Fair. Scholastic. I would grab like a couple dollars and pick up like the just uh, the ugliest. I feel you. Like the ugliest little My mama trinkets. gave me no bread <laughs> for them book fairs. At least not that I remember. Book fairs. Never gave me no bread for them book fairs. The, as a kid back in elementary school, that was literally like the state fair, nigga. Yeah. Going to that Scholastic sure. book, to the book fair. My parents would hand me like five dollars, like not enough to afford a book by no. any means, but I could definitely bring them home like a little <laughs> dolphin. They were taxing <laughs> like in this there. big. They were taxing there. Yeah, for like two dollars. Yes, <laughs> but I was learning how to budget. It's okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we didn't spend shit the last fifteen minutes talking about bullshit. I know, but um, I wanted us to get down to some nitty gritty on some some real shit that we could talk about. First and foremost, I wanted to ask because. I don't. I don't listen to a couple of different albums over the past couple of weeks. Um, as a woman now, Sarah, what you listening to nowadays? Nothing new. Nothing. Same old shit. Yeah. It, really, what happens for me is I end up like recycling old songs that I haven't heard in a very long time, and I get into them for a while. So, what you been listening to recently? Like right now, I my three songs that I always put on in the car like first things first almost every ride is um uh slow jams jamie fox kanye and twista yeah the kanye oh, yeah, Twi- okay yeah, yeah. And I, I, bro i swear i thought jamie fox too i was like jamie yeah. fox i was like no that's not he's not that's, not that's not a fox. that's a dj won't you digger. play this girl oh, and i want to yeah, song yeah, yeah. that's what it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's in slow jams yes then maybe that's why he we're thinking about it Really? You're right. He's talking. He's talking. Yes. <laughs> That's why we don't know it. Bro, like there's too many classics. But what else? Yeah. Um, overnight celebrity. Oh, you really on some old shit. Yeah, and then um, pimping all over the world. Oh, Bobby Valentino. <laughs> so you're not thinking? You're not? You're not listening to anything new? No. Not Those are the last thing. three songs I added to my Spotify. Uh, I was, uh, okay, I was fully expecting you to contribute to that type of. But okay, damn. Yeah. Just All a right. throwback person. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate y'all tuning in to another episode of the Pinto <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> um, I mean, that's yeah. true for what you guys talk about. Like, that would really be a wrap. So. It's all good. <laughs> nah, you're good. That's funny, though. So, uh, T, what you listening to? What's new, bro? Uh, Yachty's album been growing on me. And then uh, I played, shit, I played uh, Nudie's album, like, the first just skim through that. And uh, Key Glock's new album. Key Glock's new that album. You fuck with it? Yeah, that shit's hard, that shit bro. T, T tweeted a hot take earlier. What Was it today or yesterday? Saying that oh, Young, young Nudie is better than 21 Savage. And when I read that, I was thinking, I kind of agree with that. Nobody liked it. Yeah. I, I, I kind of <laughs> was agreeing with that. You probably don't know who Young Nudie is, uh, Never heard of Sarah, him. but either way, I agree with you, OT. So I just want to let you know I'm on your side, but either way, um, yeah. I won't even harp on that too much because I, I genuinely just wanted to know what Sarah was listening to nowadays because we'd be talking about our shit all the time. So I was like, I wonder what like women are actually listening to. Mm-hmm. Um, what, was that, what was that shit you was asking me the other day about hanging with a celebrity? Oh, okay. You can chime in on this. Um, Thank you. So the question, okay, because you were talking about other shit, other, yeah. But um, <laughs> okay, so think about your favorite artist right now. For you have to pay a thousand dollars, but for a thousand dollars, what? Who's your favorite artist? I okay. guess if I had to pick somebody, it would be Drake. Really? Okay. So would you pay a thousand dollars to just? chill with drake and be in his presence like going to like like just yeah a dinner <laughs> i didn't even finish it yeah you said yeah that is no, go ahead mm. i mean is because it different because no, different she's a girl yes like no like, yes because i'm thinking of opportunities aside from whatever you're saying the right reality now. is though that t, too a thousand dollars is not a lot it's of not money. bro it's not a lot of money don't get me wrong people that pay a thousand dollars to meet drake backstage so you really want to say something like would you pay ten fifteen thousand dollars to go on a oh. go to dinner with Drake, 
literally spend a whole ass night out with Drake. Not that it wasn't that. It was just like an hour with him of, of his time. Like he'll just take you to like his favorite restaurant. It's up to you. You could like talk to him about like opportunities or just like be chill in the mm-hmm. back. Like, but would you just pay a thousand dollars just to like be in his presence like that for an hour? A rap that's, that's for the, sure. Ten or fifteen, probably not. Okay, so it's a threshold. Because because a thousand, just like I said, I'm thinking of this like for me personally. I'm thinking of it as like what kind of opportunity would potentially be available for me? Mm-hmm. And at 10 to 15 racks, like, is it worth gambling that much money? Because there could be no opportunity for me. First of all, I think I'm pretty sure that Drake likes big black women, you know, BBW. That's what he's said that before. Yeah. Not that that's all that he fucks with, but like, like I don't know. His that's person. not me. That's not me. So I could just not even be his type of, he, he could have no interest in me. Am I gambling 10 to 15 racks to figure that out? No. Like so a rack, yeah. Are you putting a thousand dollars up with the hopes of that he may potentially be into you? And the well, only you know, reason- you know, like you know how Drake says in his songs, it's like he, like Drake has so much money, he'd be doing the most. Yes. Starting businesses for girls, this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? So, like at that opportunity, would I spend a rack to to invest in myself potentially, hoping that he might do something like that? Yeah. Okay. In, uh, invest yeah. invest in me in some okay. type of way. Yeah. No, the reason why I was asking because I was like, do you like him that much? Because just earlier we were talking about Drake, and you were like, I don't think he's that cute. You did no, that. I said that's when Drake was ugly. <laughs> was Aston Martin music? Oh, so he he looked like ugly. a snapping turtle. But you think he's cute now? I Is think he he's better now? looking now. I don't like the braids. Better looking, or do you think he's cute? He's good looking, but I don't like the braids. <laughs> Before the braids was like prime time for Drake, I think. What do you think about Chris Brown? Chris Brown's good looking. Are we talking about looks? Yeah, and that's it. Looks. Chris Brown is good looking. Um, yeah. But I have watched documentaries on Drake, and I really like um, one. I think that Drake is funny but he's also like super into his music like i don't know it's um it's what's the word like you think he's like self-centered no no like it it impresses me the way i think that a lot of people don't know if they haven't watched a documentary on drake or aren't that into it like how much he puts into what he does and he's also said that people will hate um like, you know, how people hated on a certified lover boy yeah. for like whatever, two, three weeks. And then all of a sudden everyone was like into a lot of the music. Mm-hmm. And that's because Drake basically Drake knows what he's doing. Like he's he's actually really calculated in what he does. And so, like, I respect that a lot about him. Yeah. Um, as and, tapped in as he is, I'm not surprised. Yeah. So. That's right. Like, I'm not surprised either. But once he said it, it was like, oh, OK. Like, yeah. but he's absolutely right. Like he, he it's like he's really thinking in advance. Like he's he he knows that he um can especially with how big he is he can put people on to things yeah you know like and he also is completely okay with dealing with the hate for the first however long until people you know settle into because people love to hate it's drake people love to hate on him yeah Mm -hmm. so and he's like super comfortable with that hate until you know people are actually like oh i actually do like the album or i actually do like the song or i'm actually into this that and the third so like that that impresses me yeah. Moving on from that, you like Chris Brown, right? Mm. To a certain extent. Yeah. Chris Brown has been getting a lot of hate lately. Yeah. For a while. The well, two different things. The first thing that I want to say is that pe- like recently, something's gotten brought up about people bringing up the whole thing from oh with Rihanna, Rihanna because he from, talks about uh, Blueface and yes, rock. Yeah, no, that's, that's what it was. That's what so it was. So I guess my real question is. That happened in what I think it was oh nine two thousand and ten. It was somewhere around yeah, that era. Mad long ago. So we're in two thousand and twenty three <laughs> now. Should we be over that? Should we be past that at this point? I mean, I feel like, I feel like personally, if um, Brianna forgave him for the situation, and it's been that long, and and I'm not like super into Chris Brown to where I know that like everything that he's done, or if he's hit any other girls or anything like that but let's just say Mm -hmm. that was his one and only incident Mm -hmm. um and rihanna forgave him about it probably knowing that she you know did what she did in order to not that she deserved it by any means because i'm not saying that but like that she wasn't just a victim in the situation you know that she aggressed the situation at least a little bit um and she was able to forgive him for whatever reason that like me personally, like, I'm over it. Like, I wouldn't... I don't see Chris Brown as, like, just an abuser. Like, I don't view him... For me, like, that's... Like, that's... 
I'm past that. Correct. And that's how I see it. If there's other history that I don't know about, because again, I'm not that into him of like, I know with Karushi, she ended up getting yeah, a restraining order. I was just going to say that. I but I don't know why. I don't story. know. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Karuchi said he was, was psycho and then like had a restraining order out for him. But so. is that because like, you know, he was super obsessed and in love and stalking her and trying to get her back? Or is that because like he was laying hands on her? Even the first thing he said, that's kind of in the same room. Well, not, of course. Yeah, but is that, but. yeah, but does that mean like the Rihanna situation shouldn't be forgiven is what we're trying to get at is if he. Re- the Rihanna cause, situation cause, has nothing to do with the Karuche situation. Right. No, I know that. But you're but asking if he should still be canceled based on the Rihanna situation. And I'm saying he the answer should be yes if he has multiple cases of violence. Mm-hmm. Like but physical violence. Physical yeah. violence. But if that's the one and only case is Rihanna with physical violence, then I think the answer is no. Because mm. everyone makes mistakes. Yeah, and that was very long. But when you're long. a repeat offender, like that's something totally different. Of course. But if you're At not that, a repeat offender, then everybody makes mistakes. Yes. If he was, if if shit yes. like that was still going on to t- today, yeah, then even would, one, even one or two other times would have me think would, about it harder. Yeah, it would be to the point where it's like, okay, well, maybe some, you are like, that person. Yeah, Something's just wrong with the guy. But yeah, I don't condone. Just for the record, I do not condone hitting a woman at all. However, I do understand that people make mistakes hey the thing is is that sorry it's different coming from a woman <clears throat> my bad t it's different coming from a woman because as a man if we say men make mistakes you should forgive them what is my word means nothing as far as that subject goes yeah Karuchi was granted a temporary domestic violent restraining order against chris brown after he allegedly threatened to kill her and said chris had beaten her during their relationship Mm-hmm. So this okay. is a reoccurring thing. Yeah. Just letting you know. Okay, so, so that's two separate occasions that we know about. Right, right. Let alone how many women he essentially yeah. paid off. You know, because especially if they're not mm-hmm. as famous as them with as much money as them, like that would yeah. be an easy, you know, closed case if he pays them off enough. So like, should he be forgiven for that if he's a repeat offender? No, no, he shouldn't. Is that situation long enough ago that I think about it actively? No. Hmm. Now, did you see the uh, video with him the other day when he uh, threw that chick's phone? Yes. On the stage. I heard. I heard though that that was like planned out. You think it was planned? I saw something that said that it was basically fake. That looked. I didn't very, even see it. It looked very much real to me. It was a video. He had some girl on stage. You know how some type, sometimes artists bring girls on stage and like, or like, and they be dancing, like, and they be and dancing stuff. on them mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like Trying a, to be like sexy, whatever. Yeah. Put like, them in a chair. Put them in a chair and like dance on them or whatever. Oh wait, I did see that, yeah. but I didn't see like all of like, it. I saw like a thumbnail. Like, actually, she wasn't even like videoing like this. She was like texting. No, she was, she was videoing herself like on Snapchat. Really? Like it looked like, like she this. was texting. No, I think she was videoing. Anyways, at the end of it. Uh, Chris Brown took her phone and threw it into the crowd. that bitch. I feel like a lot of musicians do that. Like, I don't know. Like, I honestly yeah. though, in that situation too, like, I don't know, like, obviously it's her phone. It's her property. And mm-hmm. if it were me, I wouldn't be happy. But also if it were me, like I wouldn't, I think people have gotten really comfortable disrespecting others and they don't even realize that it's disrespect. Yeah. I guess I, I, when I saw it, I was just thinking, I was like, shit artists. I mean, even, shit fans. Should fans not have their phones at concerts and just live in the moment? I think that, like, the odds that she went alone are really slim. Of course. And if she got pulled up on stage, if it were me, I would be like, girl, you have got to get a video Mm -hmm. on my phone of me. And I would never, I don't think I'd even think for a second that I should, like, pull out my Snapchat or my Instagram and video myself with Chris Brown. You know, like, I... The only thing I would be thinking about is like you have to get a video of me, like from I would my assume home or whatever. If that happened to me, say, say let's let's say I don't know, Beyonce was having a, a yeah. concert and me and T went. If she pulled me on stage, I assume that I don't need to get a video because T gonna be right, right. there. Exactly. And exactly. if you think about it, like most en- encounters where people are on stage and they're just like doing whatever, like lap dance or whatever, fuck. They never really have their phones out. No. It's always it's, like they're, really they're in the moment on some like yeah. no phone shit. So that's probably what, just what it was. I think it's an inappropriate moment to have your phone out. Yeah. That's like super like just. It's, it's, it's disrespectful. It's, it's He's doing inter- something for you. Yes, it's he very, chose you and, and you're essentially yeah. telling him that like you're not you don't even care what he did. Mm-hmm. You know, like 
you could be on the floor where you just were doing the same thing on your phone. It's yeah. very inappropriate you. when it's when it's something that intimate. It's like not yeah. like he just pulled you up stage to sit there and watch. You're, he's right, literally pulling right, you right, up stage right. so you can be a part of the performance. Think yeah, of it yeah, in yeah. Terms for other of, people too. Correct. Think of it in terms of if the dancers started pulling out their phones, like, oh my yeah, god, I'm up here exactly. dancing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I understand it's not the same thing, but at the same time, it kind of is. is. And but also, p- to play devil's advocate, you have a fan who you pull up on stage who has n- no idea that they're going to be on stage, and all of a sudden they're right there on on the fucking front and center with Chris Brown or whoever it might be. So of course they might get a little starstruck and decide to pull out their phone or, yeah. or something. And fan no, I out. see that too. I definitely see that, and like that happens. Obvious, like if it was real, then it did happen. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I still find the moment itself inappropriate. Like, but that's like that's kind of the same thing with like, how can you expect somebody? That's not her job. So how can you expect somebody to perform the way that you know we're talking about? Yeah, a dancer should perform. You know what I mean? Like we can't expect that much out of somebody random. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, it seemed like Chris. Brown, when he was when he was talking about it, he was just mainly getting mad at the fact like there's two things. There was he's like, oh y'all get so mad at me and bring this shit up every time, but y'all love smiling and and getting happy and like talking about uh like blue when face? when Krishan beats yeah. Blueface and then he's like all these other weirdo as like a list like white celebrities like they beat their wives and do this shit all the time and then they just let that shit go. That why, he's like, why am I the guy like you guys just make this shit all. Like a fucking thing, like every yeah. fucking that's that's what he was getting mad at. Yeah. That everyone's true. held on to for all these years. I kind of, I kind of get that. I kind of get that because there's that. some crazy shit like yeah. in the people. I just get like, that. Oh. Yeah. Especially Blueface and Krishan, they have like a whole a whole yeah. fucking yeah. show. That shade room community, they like love that. Oh, he he, she um smacked him in the head with a handy bottle. Like that shit funny yeah. as fuck. Like, but it's this abusive ass relationship is yeah. being toxic. If yeah. Brad Pitt smacked the shit out of fucking. Angelina yeah. Jolie, his lawyers would be like, just get that yeah. shit, and everybody would be like, oh, but like, it won't be that big of a deal. No, we'll I forget think about it in a week. Right? No, I think that would be a problem though, because I, they're they're like a list celebrities. For sure, it was. But still, it you'd would be, be surprised. A problem, but, the, but the point being is, it wouldn't be looked at as, hey, let's watch this, watch this as entertainment versus what Blueface. Oh or no, 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 yeah. Like, and we won't talk they, about it ten they're years. They're watching now. it literally as, like, this is a reality show. But we gotta realize these are people's real lives. Yeah. As long as if that's real as it as it looks like it is, that's somebody's real life. Yeah. It's fucked up. That is it is fucked up. It's all in like tabloids for millions of people to see. Like that's it can get weird. Think about it. But yeah. You wanna lay down? Goda, you chilling? That's my guy. Lay down, baby. (laughs) Look. Oh man. Sarah. Yes. You ain't got to talk about where you work at. Okay. I know you're a shot girl, though. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I have a question. Okay. It. Do you feel like it's... I had a conversation. I'm breaking this up specifically. You were talking shit about I, me? No, not about what? you. I had a conversation recently with a person. doesn't matter who the person was. Mm-hmm. About whether or not it is okay to date someone who works in the that industry. Uh-huh. And considering you work at a gentleman's club. Okay. And the, so we're going to talk about it. <laughs> in the, I don't want to say sexual field, but yeah, yeah, sexual field. Not saying that you're doing that because you're just a shot girl. Yeah. But you just walk around with shots and just pass them out. But my point being is just being in that industry and... I had a guy tell me, bro, there's no possible way I could ever fuck with a girl who is in that industry. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Well, so obviously, I, I know me and I know what I go home and do and who I am and, you know, mm-hmm. who I communicate with and associate with. And so from my point of view, I am completely dateable because, again, like we talked about, I'm, I'm super introverted, like... I, I hate going to work. Like, it's so outside of who I am. But I also have a really good oppor- – like, me personally, I have a really good opportunity because I'm an independent contractor, so I work whenever I want to. I work whatever hours I want to. I go here. I sell shots. I make money. I leave. 
you know, like I can Correct. I can work for three hours and make some hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, some I've made over a thousand dollars working, you know, three hours before not shaking my ass or anything and then I leave, right? So this is my that's my job. Now I I really see from a man's point of view who either doesn't come into the club uh, and and sees what I do and you know how I act and what I do at the club. Um, I could see it being a turnoff to a guy for sure. But what I will say is that I'm more than willing for a man to take me out the club. Mm. I've had multiple men say, you know, like not that I'm interested in those men, but it's a thing for men to say that like I'll take you out this club. Well, what do you feel like it takes for a man to take you out the club? Well, you'd have to pay the bills. Because I'm paying my bills right now with this club money. So, like, if you're going to take me out the club, that means that you're taking on everything that I would pay for with this money. You know? Mm-hmm. I'm completely willing to be taken out of the club. Like like I said, I don't, I don't even like going. I just have a really good opportunity yeah, that I can... open to it. Yeah, like, if, if I meet a man and he's like, I don't want you working at the club. Like, I got this, that, and the third... Like, you don't need to work at the club anymore. Done. Easy. Bye. For sure. And that's how I feel. There's other girls out there, though. Dancers, other shot girls, whatever, that would stand ten toes on their independence and say, you know, like, I'm not a hoe or I'm not fucking for money or whatever their reason is that they should be allowed to work at the club well, and have f- a man. And I don't feel that do way. Do you feel like it's it's wrong for a man to not want to date a girl who works in that type of environment of course not you date whoever you want to date your morals are your morals yeah if i don't want to if i don't want to date a man that does xyz then like who's gonna tell me that i'm wrong for that true that nobody that that's how i feel and if a man doesn't want to date a dancer Mm -hmm. by all means that's not your girl then if you don't want to date a girl who does only fans that's not your girl then Mm mm-hmm what I what I don't like is a man who tries to convince a girl. Like I said, I'm willing to be taken out of the club. That's something different. If you meet a girl who's not willing to be taken out of the club, don't try to convince this girl to take her out of the club. Well, yeah, because then, of course, at that point, I feel like the resentment team thing is kind of come. Exactly. Or, like, if you meet an OnlyFans girl and she, and she says, like, I don't want to stop doing OnlyFans. I make too much money, whatever, whatever. Do not try to pursue this girl. Mm-hmm. Done. Y'all are not meant for each other. You're not compatible. I think as not just guys, but even women are guilty of this. We have this... I feel like women might be especially having this thing where we meet someone who has all of this type of shit that's wrong with them. And you know it's red flags. However, we still want to go into it because you kind of think, I might be able to change them. It's dating someone for their potential yeah. is what it's called. It's dating somebody for... Mm doing what you would do if you were in their position Mm -hmm. if i were them Mm -hmm. and i had me this is what i would do yep if i were them and i had this amount of money this is what i would do if i were them and i had this opportunity that's what i would do however we have to realize that we are humans and i cannot interact with another person expect them to do exactly what i think they are going to do and they're not going i want to do they're not going to do it they're not going to do it it's not going to happen you don't know them like that people like to people especially we're adults now you know what i'm saying like it's one thing when you're 18, 19, maybe even 20 years old, right? Like seeking guidance a little yep. bit more at that age. I'm 25. You're 27? 26. 26. You know, like, how old are you? 28. We're at an age that, like, we don't want to be told what to do. Mm-hmm. We want to follow our own path. And then if, it, if your views align with mine, then let's continue. Correct. And that doesn't mean there's not going to be disagreements here and there. And that's okay, but like as far as like following an actual path, again, if there's a girl who's 23 years old and she said to herself, like, I'm gonna dance until I'm 30, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna start a business, and then mm-hmm. I'm gonna let it out, whatever her plan is, and then a guy comes along and says, I wanna take you out the club, they don't align. You're, she's too grown at yes. that age to like, if she, even if she said problem. yes, she would be unhappy because she came up with this plan. That's resentment. And she, yeah, and she's she's set in what she wants to do. Correct. And so, I completely understand a guy I, that wouldn't want that. That's why, and that brings you back to the whole thing because you, like I said, I'm 26, you're 25, he's 28. Because a lot of women I know come into this whole thing. 
I know women I meet, they want children. Yeah. Women want kids. Yeah. They all do? Yeah. I mean, not obviously not all of them, but. They want kids. They want a family. I don't, and I don't know. What's, I mean, what's the perfect age to have children? Is there a perfect age? Mid what's to late 20s. Age, what's the perfect age to have children? What's the perfect age to have children and get married? Because I think we can all we can all agree, back in high school or when we got out of high school, when we got out of high school, within our late like teens to the early twenties, we have people who got married immediately, and started having kids. Crazy. And I look at them and I'm like, me too. I'm like, how? There's definitely people that like we like, we all know. Yes. And I envy people like that. I'm like. I love that for you. I love yeah. that you were able to fall in love so early. Yeah. Want to settle down, have a family, be that type of person. That's great. I cannot, even at 26 right now, I'm like, the thought of like starting a family at this particular moment is crazy. Taboo. It's crazy. I actually have just, just within the last maybe not even six months, fallen more into a comfortable mindset of like, really settling down and having kids very very recently and for a long time and I'm still kind of I'm still kind of there but like maybe this will continue to change but for a long time I said that um I really didn't mind having kids or not having kids I almost left that up to whoever my future husband would be I I still kind of feel that way like if my future husband is like I'm not interested in having kids Mm -hmm. I can foresee myself being okay with that and never having kids um, but if my future husband absolutely wants kids, I'm super fine with having kids also. Mm-hmm. But I'm right. I'm leaning, huh? Thirty two is the best age to have kids. Thirty two. Thirty two. I feel like thirty two is Shit. honestly a pretty good sweet spot. Yeah. Thirty two, thirty three. That's what I feel like. But at the same time, when I was sixteen, I was like, you know what? I remember saying this. I want to have kids probably when I'm like twenty six, twenty seven. Oh my god! I remember saying twenty seven too. 27 I'm was my 26, age for sure. I'm 26 years oh, old right that. now. I still feel. And having a child does not even, like, I can't fathom it. Me personally, I'm not a kid person. I don't even like kids. I know I'd like my own kids. But, like, when other kids are, like, it, it takes a very special child for me to like being around them. Well, you got to realize, sometimes people lie to themselves in terms of, like, the actually liking kid, their own kid. Oh, my God. That's a fact. Do you know that there's a huge... Um, thread on Reddit about people being, you know, because you can be anonymous on Reddit mm. about people being brutally honest and saying that like they hate, hate, they they hate kids. their kids, they hate being a parent, and Damn. that's not a new thing. Mm-hmm. It's just now accessible to be able to, you know, go on somewhere anonymous and post on the internet for people to see that that's even true. But that is people have felt that way for mm. decades have have you know absolutely resented their children. That's and no one's and no one's been able to talk about That's it because terrible. they couldn't say it anonymously, but now. But now that you know that's such a thing, it's a huge threat on Reddit. Like so many people, saying that they yes. absolutely resent their kid that's and they a, hate that, that they're not, a parent. That's not that's not something that's far fetched. People gotta realize. Do you understand the po- like the the responsibility that comes into uh, having a child? Your life changes. A lot of people don't. It's not like. People will act like having a child is something where it's just like, oh, I have a kid now. And everything's and, so like, wonderful and beautiful. No, you have Especially a kid. Especially if you and, don't have the money for it. Yes. I, I don't, I'm not saying a kid is is a burden, in, but in a sense, it, it, can, it be. can be. It can be. Especially if you don't have any money. Uh, a, a kid is a, a huge responsibility. You're, it's not about you anymore. Your whole life is altered, no matter how you want to put it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your whole life is altered. So when I think about having a child, I go, okay, I know I want kids someday, but when it gets to that point, I want to make sure that I'm in a point, I'm in a position where I can take care of them financially, yeah. emotionally, whatever it is. And I know there's never any per- perfect situation. Every, no, nothing's going to be perfect, but I would like to be in the right mindset before yeah. I have a child. Yeah. So when it gets there, I can raise them in a nice environment. Yeah. It's just difficult because most of the times people have kids before they're ready i think that there's two super super important factors in whether or not you're ready to have a kid and one is financially and that doesn't mean you need to be rich Mm -hmm. but like 
you know your numbers. Correct. You know based off of your own bills, where you're staying, what neighborhood you're in. Like, mm-hmm. you, you know your situation. And you know if you're financially ready to have a kid. And two, presents. If you if you can if you have enough money enough money I'm not saying a lot but if you have enough money and you can be present in your child's life I believe that you can raise a good kid and I believe that those are the two absolute most important things that you need right before you can say to yourself like I'm I'm ready to be a parent if you don't have the time if you're financially ready but you're working eighty hours a week you're not ready you're not gonna be there. You have to be present for your kid. You have to be present. See, I'm under I'm under the impression that kids don't really care about you being present as much as we think they do. I think they do, and I think that it's something that like they don't realize until they're older, twenty five, and in therapy, wondering yes. wondering why they have now, a strained relationship I, with their when parents. When I say that, I don't, I'm not saying on some like I'm not saying be a parent and go off into the wind for however long all i'm saying is you know how parents are like oh my god i can't work this many hours because i gotta be home for my kid and this and that now if you are somewhat there for your child if you take care of your cut your kid and you are you see them in the morning or whether that be late in the evening whatever it might be well that's like a usual you have a day off i feel like Kids don't want to be around us as much as you think they do. Well, it depends on their age, too. So if we're, if we're talking about a two, three-year-old, I think presence is super important. That's the most important time. Yeah, that's like the most important time. If we're talking about a tween to teenager, of course, yes. they're not even interested in being around their parents anymore at that age. But we're in such an era where it's so difficult because, difficult because it's difficult. You have to balance the factor between being there for your kid, but also you have to provide for your family. Right. So, well, that's why I say those are the two things that... Because you can have one without the other all day. You can be unemployed and have yep. no money and be present and be, you know, and you could be smart and help with their homework and all of that stuff. But if you don't, if you're not financially there, then you're still not ready for a kid. Yeah, and that's so. why I think those are the two most important things that you have to say to yourself. Am I ready to be a parent? Because am I, am I in a position with my workplace where I'm making enough money and I don't have to work so much that I'm never around to see my kid? Because mm-hmm. if your daughter has a ballet recital, you need to be there period Mm -hmm. you need to be there if your son has a football game you need to be there because like i said those are the type of things that like they don't realize that it was such a problem and it affected them so heavily until they're 25 and in therapy yes but at the same time not everyone's life is the same to be able to do that well that's a fact and there's people out here having kids unexpectedly at you know 18 years old with no job and no money yeah living at their parents house Does that mean that they're going to be an awful parent? No, that's not what it means at all. But if you're going to say to yourself, I think I'm ready to be a parent, I think those two things, anyone can make it work. I believe anyone can make it work. You're right. I don't disagree with you. And some kids can be strong enough to where, like, they're almost adults really young. You know? Yeah. And they just kind of, like, accept it for what it is. And they say, you know, my mama had to work three jobs and... I was basically a parent to my little brother or, you know, whatever. You have those stories all the time. And they're not necessarily that fucked up in the head about it. But. I feel that. Get this man a mic. Just depends on the situation, man. So, I'm going to ask y'all this before we wrap it up tonight. Where are we at? Somewhere in the 50s. Uh, Um, I was talking to Rob about. I was. I was talking to Rob about this. There was a bug in here. I saw that earlier. I was talking to Rob about this earlier. So I figured I would would ask y'all this. Um, Say tomorrow you wake up. Say. Cody wants to say something. Cody, talk your shit, bro. You good? He's nervous. He's nervous, guys. Sorry. What are you going to say? You're talking to Rob about this. This is a very broad question that I wanted to ask. Everybody, I was like, you know, let me ask T and Sarah this tonight. This is a rant. It's a, it's a right. It's honestly, you've probably been asked this before. Um, tomorrow you wake up, you got an extra five hundred thousand dollars. What are you doing, T? What am I doing? Yeah, five hundred grand came? tomorrow. What are you doing? Off rip. I'm. I'm gonna probably save like three. Maybe like two fifty of it, and then just like take 
care of whatever little debt I have and just probably to get a nice little spot and then oh, rewind that first. I probably had my mom like twenty five fifty and then save like maybe three hundred and then just get like a probably car and house and just like the rest is chill. And it probably invests like the rest. Would you quit your job? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. What you? Easily. Uh I don't think I would quit my job. I think I because I I live to be honest, I'm black. I live very I live very leisurely. Cap. What do you mean? I go in Cap. I would I quit my job? Cap. When I go into work. Cap. I wouldn't have to go into work for months and Cap. still have my job. So why would I quit it? Oh, that's true. Because she's an in, independent. Cap. I'm an independent contractor. I could not go in for months Respect. and still have my job. So like, okay. why would I go in and be like, "Fuck y'all"? I'm not saying you gotta do all of that. You know, like I. Why would I quit? Like, but I you might just, have that money, and then you're just like, and then your 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 schedule is not like nine to five, Monday to Friday. So you just might be like, one why thing the about, fuck am I doing this? One thing about me though that I've realized about myself is when I make good money, I'm so much more motivated to work. Like if I have a night where I big ball. You're like, I want to go in the next I night. can't wait to go back into work. Mm-hmm. When I have a night when I leave with like a hundred bucks, You're like, what like I hate that place. <laughs> I fucking hate that place. I, I never want to go back. Yeah. So I, I could see myself waking up with 500000 in my bank account and being like, I can't fucking wait to go to work tonight. Like, I'm going to make so much money. Because <laughs> I know, too, like my vibes and my energy bring something that makes me more money. I, I know when I go into work, I know the type of energy that I bring into work when I'm going to make money. I, okay. kn- I know it before I get there. Now, let me ask you this. You specifically, Sarah. Being that, knowing how much bread you can make, don't be offended when I ask you this. What's keeping you from starting OnlyFans? <laughs> Unfor- <laughs> unfortunately, I'm just being real. Unfortunately, morals. I feel like I would... I feel like... And I... Like, and this is like no hate to any girl that does OnlyFans or anything like that. I actually just watched a podcast the other day. This girl talking about she brings in some like 350K a month on OnlyFans. And I feel like I would, I would look at myself in a way that I, I wouldn't like her. So you are worried about the, not the way that people look, will look at you. But the way you will look at yourself. Yeah. And that's something that like the, the way that you view yourself is fluid. So like just because I feel that way today doesn't mean let's let's say tomorrow I woke up with five million followers on TikTok or something. And I knew that I could be one of those girls making hundreds of thousands a month on OnlyFans. Correct. That's fluid. That could change. Mm-hmm. That's not my situation right now. My situation right now is like I have a really small Instagram account. I have a really small TikTok account. Okay. I don't post like that. One, do I even believe that I would make enough money to supplement how I would feel about myself looking in the mirror? No. Because what I do, I always say this. I don't knock nobody's hustle. Nobody's hustle. Unless you're, you've sold your soul and you're not making no money. If you're selling drugs and you're selling little dime bags and you can get arrested. Please go work at McDonald's. Because mm-hmm. it's like, what's the point? What are you doing? If you are selling pussy and you're fucking for money... And you're not driving a brand new car in a beautiful, at least, apartment. And your bills are paid and you got money saved. What are you doing? So how much do you need to make per month to make it worth it for you? At least. And this is like, at at least for real. At least $10,000 a month for me to be able to even like think about starting an OnlyFans. And... My OnlyFans would not consist of like any porn, no coochie, probably no nipples. Like that, it would just be like, what's what's the word? Uh, when, like content where they just show like 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 not like nude pics, but like half nude pics. Yeah, like it like uh, there's a word for it, like it, implying. I think is mm-hmm. the word like implying nudity or something like that. Yeah, like where it would be either either lingerie. Or, you know, you know, sex, like sexy type of pictures, Correct. but like n- definitely not too much. Okay. And even to do that, I would have to make $10,000 at least a month. And, and like I said, where I'm at right now, that's unrealistic to even <sighs> think that that's possible. So it's, it's a no for me <laughs> at this moment. Respect. I'm not mad at it. Oh, T's back. With a cookie. 
Sorry. You're good, bro. Damn. I interrupted the whole combo. No, you're good. No, no. No. I was just I just wanted to get her take on that because I was just very curious. Um I'm gonna wrap us up anyway. But um I just wanted to know as as far as the OnlyFans shit. Not even just OnlyFans, but just sex work in general, how much a woman actually has to make to feel like it's worth it to put themselves out there like that. And all women are different. There's definitely women out there that think I actually just heard someone say um, the other day that she had made, oh, her OnlyFans is going good. She's made uh, 1200 this month so far. Twelve hundred. She's doing like the whole shebang, like on it, like yes, and if, like, and if, like and if, fucking and herself. Yeah, I think we assume. I think as a man, we assume that anytime a bitch makes an OnlyFans, that a she's, woman. Anytime a woman, thank you. Anytime a woman makes an OnlyFans, we assume that they are making bands. Yeah, no, that depends not, on your socials. Not and every totally like a every, manager or some shit. Like, yeah. Not every girl has that type of following. So yeah. Uh, it just and also not every girl might not be as attractive as the next one, but yeah, that's another thing. So either way, I think that is you know subjective. But I appreciate you putting your input on there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap us up because I know we've been going for a minute. So um, we appreciate y'all tuning in to another episode of the Payday Off Podcast. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed. Make sure you follow us at Payday Off Podcast. Follow Sarah at. Sarah Spice with two E's and no H. Okay. Uh, T? T Greenery. Follow me at Roy Motors. Make sure you get your imperfect tees at TroyBlyden.com. You're not wearing one tonight. I'm not tonight. You were earlier, though. Yeah, sure. I, was, I was wearing a uh, shirt earlier. But uh, just like that, get it. Follow us at Payday Off Podcast. We got Coda here. <clears throat> Coda. Follow him at wherever. Coda Bear Pit. And just like that. <laughs> Were your dogs Instagram? Yeah, we never really? put, we never. Oh, it's on Coda Bear? Okay. All right. He really, Bear has, Pit. He, he really has Instagram. Just like that. Follow him and we out. <laughs>